Shut the fuck up! So here's an old video from 2007. Why do I bring it up? Because it's pretty bizarre. Now, there are people who have different opinions about Kennedy, how he was killed, um, why he died, etc, etc. And it's, this video isn't about that. But this person is making a lot of radical claims. Not least that she is Kennedy. Yeah, this is a group I used to talk about several years ago called Destiny. And they have what they call an interdimensional portal. An interdimensional portal interviews. In which a girl basically claims to go into a trance, talks like normal, but claims to be different people. So these supposedly true channelings have included Hitler, Kennedy, uh, Marilyn Monroe, LeVay, um, Alistair Crowley, and a large number of other individuals who are somewhat famous either culturally or in some historical sense. And of course they've channeled um, concepts like energy, air, uh, objects like guns and even toilet paper and they have beliefs about reptilian conspiracy theories and Illuminati. <clears throat> I am the manifestation of toilet paper within this world and I'm here to share my experience of me as a manifestation of toilet paper. And you think being toilet paper is bad? Well, guess what? <clears throat> I am a manifested condom in this world. It's worth pointing out that this kind of act is very common in the spiritual movement. This idea that you can channel something beyond yourself Typically, this is the kind of thing that people tend to do with so-called spirit guides, and they claim that they're bringing forward good evidence. But the stuff they talk about is usually philosophy, different ideas, and it's extremely rare that a person claims to channel a person that people could question and bring forward genuine evidence. Now, with the Destiny group, there's one reason why they channeled famous individuals or reptilian aliens and other such nonsense. Because it was, and still is, popular. And by focusing on popular topics, they generated large numbers of views. And I've explained how they used to scam people in the past in several previous videos. But this kind of act is actually really well known. It's not only well known amongst people who are con merchants as well as people who believe in this kind of stuff, but also amongst actors who are putting on a character and acting in a certain way. And in a great many ways what we see from these trance channelings or trance mediumship is simply a kind of amateur dramatics. And you have it with actors where they go into character and act like the character and try and think as the character. Indeed, some people who operate in uh, law enforcement with profiling employ some similar characteristics to try and work out the mentality of a killer. Although that's to a lesser degree, of course. With actors, they want to get into the role. They want to act the part if they're operating in a certain way. That goes without saying, they're being paid, or preferably would be, being paid to do a job, and so they act the part and they try and put themselves into the character by thinking as the character would to make their work more convincing. Now the problem is, with people who do this religiously, or spiritually, whichever term you prefer, they are basically operating outside the realms of evidence, unless they actually give something which is more concrete. So if they're saying, I've got your Uncle Bob here, and he's saying blah blah blah, and it all fits, there's no cold reading, no trickery. What you tend to get, as I mentioned, is philosophy, ideas, and it's based around the general spirituality of the person giving the message. They might put on a voice, they might not. 
but in the end, they're not really providing anything of any great value. It's also worth noting that cult leaders have used the idea of channeling, of expressing a higher being, higher spirit, a god, an angel, a spirit guide, or whatever the case may be, in order to legitimise their policies. So if they have unjust policies and people are questioning their view, they can simply put on an act and act like it's coming from some kind of greater source. And the trick of the believer is to assert when you question these things that unless you can prove that these things are definitely wrong, that means it must be somehow right. But of course, even if you bring forward the evidence of their shaky history, of other scams they may have been involved in, ones they're running now, the techniques they use, the methods, the money they gain, and so many other issues and abuses, the believer can still reject you because you haven't proven a negative, which is basically that a person is not channeling from a higher source. This is typically because they make non-falsifiable claims. They're claiming to talk to angels. How can you test an angel? They're claiming to get knowledge from an angel or higher being. So it's not checkable. You can't confirm it, you can't compare it, you can't study it, you can't test it at all. So it's really unfalsifiable. You just can't prove it, you can't disprove it, you can just assert it. And that's what these people do. But of course, even with the testable claims, claims about Atlantis, claims about alien abduction, and so many other things, what they do when you come up with no evidence, nothing in controlled conditions, no actual proof, what you get from them is an evasion. Oh, um, well that Atlantis is in a different dimension. Or the dimensional balances have shifted, moving Lemuria into a different vibrational state. Ah yes, that was in a different dimension. Oh, that was on a different world. Are the evidence being covered up? The Illuminati are covering up the evidence. So then, because they're making it up as they go, even though it doesn't actually support their premise, because they can keep on saying the burden of proof is upon the doubter instead of the actual believer, the claimant themselves, they can simply say, skeptics haven't been able to disprove it. So even though they're the ones who are asserting the ideas, they're not willing or able to actually support the ideas and they insist, because it's all they've got left, that it's the job of the person who doubts them to disprove it. It's how can you prove something is not evident if there is no actual evidence for you to test. The unsupported claim may as well be completely fabricated. This is John F. Kennedy. A person who had absolutely no idea about how to love themselves. 